Vice Governor of the People's Bank of China, Xuan Chenlin, said yesterday that with the changes in the monetary policy of the major central banks, the position of the Chinese regulator will become more independent. How realistic this forecast is, time will tell. In the meantime, the Chinese authorities were forced to announce a further easing of their monetary policy. This caused the yuan to plummet to four months lows. To support the yuan, the largest Chinese state-owned banks were forced to quickly dump huge reserves of the US dollar on the forex. The move rippled through currency markets and caused the dollar to rise across the boat in the Asian trade. While the yuan was seeking govern, govern, um, while the yuan was seeking government support, the yen weakened to its 10-year lows during the Asian session. Inflation reports published today in Japan showed that the annual inflation rate rose to 2.8 percent in February. Thus, inflation accelerated for the first time in a few months and reached its highest level since November last year. The data supported the Bank of Japan's decision to put an end at, uh, uh, at the same time the historic reversal in a monetary policy earlier this week failed to address the sharp difference in interest rates between the United States and Japan. That's why the yen remains under strong pressure from the US dollar. Despite persistent attempts by Japan's monetary authorities to strengthen its position, the dollar yen pair today tested the 151 level, which used to trigger Forex intervention in 2022. In terms of the difference in established key interest rates, the US dollar now has a total advantage over all its main competitors. Both in the basket of six currencies and the, in the G10 group, the Bank of Japan's rate hike by 10 basis points was clear, clearly not enough to attract capital inflows and strengthen the yen. And in this context, today the dollar index rose to a three-week high of about 104.20, trading in the interdecade between 10.9 and 104.4. The instrument is on a track to close higher for the second week in a row, and this is clearly not the limit for the greenback. The US Federal Reserve made it clear that um, it still plans to make three rate cuts this year. Stock markets view um, this signal as a dovish and updated their record closing highs in the previous session. The S&P 500 index is also trading higher today in the intradecade between 5,240.66 and 5,261 points, signaling an optimistic and to a successful peak. On the other hand, the differential between the Federal Reserve and the major central banks in interest rate settings is clearly widening amid yesterday's unexpected decision by the Swiss Central Bank. Eventually, the process of a monetary easing has been launched and now the markets are wondering who's next. Judging by the recent statistics, the US economy is on a sound footing. Existing home sales increased the most in a year in February. The US composite PMI turned positive for the first time in two years. And the number of initial unemployment claims fell to 210,000 last week. That's the labor market in the United States is still tight. The Federal Reserve has enough leverage to delay the cycle of rate cuts until a later date. As for the ECB, its situation is more vulnerable. For example, expectations of an economic slowdown notably reinforced business sentiment in the euro area's largest economy. As reports published today show that the business climate index in Germany has risen to 87.8 points, it's the highest mark in the last nine months. However, flash estimates show that the US economy is in a better shape than the Eurozone's economy. The key drivers for the euro dollar pair at the end of the week may be comments from policymakers. Among them are Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell, 
Bundesbank Governor Joachim Nagel and the ECB chief economist Philip Lane. Christine Lagarde, for example, said today that policymakers expect inflationary pressure to ebb away in the Eurozone. The US dollar received a boost from the news on the UK economy. Retail sales in the UK remained flat in February, following an upwardly revised 3.6% increase in January and defined market forecasts, which had anticipated a 0.3% decline. The pound sterling sank in response. As a result, the dollar year, um, as a result, the euro dollar pair moved downward. Following a sharp surge, the greenback moderated its rally today. The US dollar strengthened to such an extent that the time is a right to speak about its result status. Traders also notice signs that the euro is oversold, and this could lead the single currency to a technical pullback towards the critical support at the uh, 1.08. The nearest resistance level to the euro is located in the zone of 1.0900 and 1.0911. But while the dollar index is breaking multi month growth records, traders are not interested in the buying the euro. And not only the euro. After the decisions and the statements of central banks this week, the US dollar has emerged as the uh, undisputed winner. And this week, the greenback has already grown in value by 2% compared to the March lows and continues to strengthen its position. Oil prices are also wind down by the firm US dollar. The brand price slipped to $85 per barrel, extending its slide for the third session in a row. Relatively positive political news also played a role in the decline in oil prices. In addition, statistics indicated a decrease in the gasoline supplies to the United States, which indicates a drop in the consumer demand and leads to cheaper oil. Therefore, on the brand chart, we observe a pullback from the recent local high and the price decline of about 3%. As a result, the fri uh, by Friday, the sellers had won back almost the entire rally from the beginning of the week. However, there are still no radical changes in the market cycles. Oil prices are still fluctuating within the range of 85.1 to $86.1 per barrel. You have watched the market review by Insta Forex Analyst for Friday, March 22. Subscribe to Insta Trader channel and we keep you updated on all market developments. Feel free to ask any questions and leave your comments. So, see you online on Monday.